Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television. And I want to say I have never been to a meeting in any state, and I've been to all of them, where the people had come in, the teachers and the education leaders and the citizens and people who really care and the political leaders. We've got members of the legislature right here and the State Board of Education presence out here. You all are here from all over Iowa, and I want to tell you folks, I believe you're fixing to change things in this state, and I am very impressed. Serving four terms as governor, Jim Hunt is a nationally recognized leader in education who led North Carolina through 20 years of education reform and economic growth. On July 25th in Des Moines, Governor Hunt spoke at the Iowa Education Summit, offering his perspective on why school reform must be systemic in its approach. This is Intelligent Talk Television. I'm honored and proud to introduce the Honorable James Hunt Jr. from North Carolina. Thank you all. Well, Governor Branstead, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. I sometimes say that when I get over-introduced like that, that I wish my wife and mother could have been here to have heard it. My wife would have enjoyed it and my mother would have believed it. I am delighted to be here in Iowa today, I want to tell you all that I have been over the years to literally hundreds of education meetings and conferences, many of them with speakers you've had here today. I have watched every governor for 35 or 40 years give leadership to education. And I want to say I have never been to a meeting in any state, and I've been to all of them, where the people had come in, the teachers and the education leaders and the citizens and people who really care and the political leaders. We've got members of the legislature right here and the State Board of Education presence out here. You all are here from all over Iowa and I want to tell you folks, I believe you're fixing to change things in this state and I am very impressed. Now, my wife is here. She is from Jasper County, Iowa. She, I know something about the good schools you've had over the years because my wife graduated from one. And by the way, uh, she did a year at Northern Iowa University before I swept her away to North Carolina. All of my success is due to her, and her family goes back in education. Her mother taught in a one-room schoolhouse in Iowa. That school, that building is still there, just north of Colfax. Her daddy was chairman of the local board of education. So I know something about what you've done and what great excellence you've had and how committed you are. Now. Folks, I, I, uh, I have had an opportunity uh, to be involved, to be here in Iowa a number of times. Uh, I uh, have seen the progress that you've made. I know some of these things you've heard today about what's changed in Iowa and where maybe you stand on some things. But let me tell you, these changes in the main have come about because you have a lot of children who are not as fortunate, many of them poor, many of them from homes where they don't even speak English. You know all of that. But your ish, the issue for you, and by the way, most states have had that happen to them, the issue for you is how you do make your schools more effective. And I know that you can do it, and I'm excited to see 
what you are about. In fact, I would say this to you. There is no state in America today that is focusing on improving its schools like you all are doing here in Iowa under Governor Branstead's leadership. You should be proud of yourselves. And I'm proud of you, and I'm going to applaud you. Now, today, in the time that we have, I'm going to talk about some of the elements of systemic change. Systemic change means changing the whole system. And you've heard so many ideas today. You'll hear them in the workshops this afternoon about how to do those changes. And by the way, having all that input from you all, the thing the governor and the lieutenant governor have done around the state, town hall meetings, all of that, the people need to devise the change. They need to support the change and work together to make it happen. I want to talk briefly about education standards. Uh, early childhood, teaching, school leadership, and public engagement. First, I want to say a word about standards. You've heard some about it today. And I want to commend Iowa for being an early adopter of the Common Core State Standards that 44 states have joined in putting together in this, in this United States. Your state board adopted them on July the 29th last year. These standards uh, devised by the states, not Washington, but the states, we the states working together, will help us compete in the world. It's the real answer to building our economy, having good jobs that pay well. And the business leaders know that, and Governor Branstead heard that around the state. And now you're infusing those common core standards into your Iowa core standards and working with other states to devise new and better assessments to measure student learning. I'm very proud of you, and I hope that you will stick with this and be an example to other states around America. Now, I want to say a word about early childhood. I'm not going to call it preschool. That's already been commented on here. When, when I met my wife a lot of years ago, I found out that in Iowa, she had gone to kindergarten. We didn't have kindergarten in North Carolina. So when I first ran for office for lieutenant governor, I ran on a platform of putting, preschool, of putting kindergarten, public kindergarten into our schools. I won that election, I got a mandate, and we did it. Full day, one teacher and an assistant in every classroom. And it's worked wonderfully. And I learned that, of course, from Iowa. But we have discovered in recent years, folks, that age five, when you have five-year-old kindergarten, is too late. And so many states, including you all, are working with age four. Um, I would say to you, that's not early enough to help students or children who need a lot of help. In our state of North Carolina, 80% of the women work out of the home. Those children are being cared for by somebody. Now, it may be home care somebody with an aunt or somebody. More often, it's in child care, perhaps at a church or at a public or private uh, child care center. We've learned a lot about those early years. And we need to know a lot about them, every one of us, including the legislators. We know now, for example, that most of, the, of a child's brain development occurs by age three. So we've really got to focus and make sure those early years are good ones. And you've got a lot of people who are doing it here in Iowa. I remember coming here uh, five or six years ago when Governor Vilsack was in office, going up to Iowa State at Ames and meeting and speaking to a group of early childhood educators. 
and I found out the excitement and committed commitment to it that you all have expressed here today. That's a great thing for Iowa. And I want to encourage you to be one of the best states in America in that early childhood uh, work. Frankly, it's the best money you will spend. We, of course, want to support parents. They're the best uh, at early childhood development if, if they are there to do it, uh, if they are prepared, if they work at it. But many children are in child care, and we need to make sure that they're getting very high quality care. So I would encourage you in Iowa to have well-funded programs of early childhood education with very good teachers, and it needs to be available, not paid for totally by the state, certainly, but pay attention to the quality of care they're getting and the start that they're getting. We need to focus on three big things with those early years, parenting skills. Second, high quality uh, centers or caregivers. And third, dealing with health issues. And, and what we're shooting for is to have every child, when they first go to school that first day to public school or private school, be healthy and ready to learn and I know that you're working on this, but I urge you to put a lot more emphasis on it in the state of Iowa. Third thing I want to mention to you is this matter of, of improving teaching. And you've been talking about it all day here today, and you'll continue to do that as you should. That should be the main focus in systematic reform really thoroughly changing the schools and improving them. I want to commend Governor Branstead's insistence on major involvement of teachers in this summit. Let me tell you folks, you can't have great schools if political leaders are constantly fighting with teachers. Teaching is the most important job in the world. By the way, it's the toughest. We need to work with teachers. We need to respect teachers. We need to help them be their very best. But we've learned a lot in recent years about how to, uh, how to improve teaching in America's public schools, and we have an absolute obligation to make the changes that we need to make to do that. One of the things, of course, we need to do, and you've heard uh, this discussed already, but you need to figure out how to do it in Iowa. On all these things you're hearing about, you're, you're hearing things, you're getting ideas here today and tomorrow, then you've got to figure out how's Iowa going to do it. You can do it best in Iowa. And all of you together, 1,600 strong across this state, need to be figuring that out. As I said, we need to respect teachers and help with them, help them in every way that we can. But we've learned a lot about, about how to improve it. And of course, all of this is about increasing student learning. Um, we have learned, for example, that uh, one of the most important things, and I really was proud to hear the things I heard here a little earlier today, uh, we, we need to really focus on that preparation in the colleges of education and in, and in other ways. Uh, we need to focus when they get into the classroom on, on, pre, on good professional development. I would strongly urge you to have good mentoring for new teachers. It is tough to walk in that classroom. I haven't done it in a long time, but I, my undergraduate degree before I got a master's in economics and a law degree was in agricultural education. I'm a certified VOAG teacher, though I haven't taught. I tell people that when I did my practice teaching, I found out how tough it was and I went to law school. 
But it is tough, and we ought to have good mentors. And in North Carolina, I put in money to pay mentors for two years so those new teachers would have two years of mentoring. Now, during the two times, uh, the two times I was governor, two in, out, then two, two times back in, I chaired a group of teachers as we, as we created the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards, and I found out how tough and how skilled and what a great art and skill teaching is. Sarah Brown Wesley, who was the 2010 National Teacher of the Year from here in Iowa. A nationally board certified teacher could tell us all about it as Linda Darling Hammond has already done today. So I want to suggest a few things here that you do in terms of improving teaching. You've heard others. First of all, see that they are better prepared. We are not doing a good enough job in preparing our teachers. And I say that to all of you who are college presidents. College presidents need to put as much emphasis on the school of education as they do on the school of business and law and other areas. And I would urge them to do it. I hope you'll urge them to do it. We can do a better job of preparing teachers. You'll hear a lot about it here. We need to be more successful in hiring teachers who have the potential to be very good. How do you pick them? You've got 12 people applying this fall. Maybe they've already been hired, but in a year, coming year, for two slots. How are you going to pick them out? Just the nicest looking, most verbal? No, there are better ways. Teach for America has found ways to spot terrific potential and help select the best ones. We've got some private companies that have done a lot of work in this field and can advise school systems and help them do a better job. We need, as I said, to mentor those teachers. Don't throw them in the classroom and assume they'll get good and do a great job. Help them when they start out. There are a lot of questions and they need to have help and you need to help them grow. And of course, we must evaluate teachers on a fair and effective basis. And it's all about, of course, student learning. Um, there's a big discussion here uh, about how to do that. I would suggest that you in Iowa try very hard to develop a state, uh, an approach that can be used statewide in evaluating your teachers. It's going to be done at the local level, of course, but you can find, perhaps you can find an approach to it that you can use on a statewide basis in terms of how you measure effectiveness. Uh, here's, I, I've got a suggestion for you. This will surprise some of you. I suggest that in your formula or approach to evaluating teachers, and we should do it, that one, you look at student learning. Of course, that's a, uh, that's a challenge in itself since we don't have uh, tests or assessments in every grade, but figure out how to measure the, the learning of their students when they're in their classroom. Second, have qualified evaluators go into the classroom, observe their teaching, and look at the results of it. These are normally really good teachers who can do that. That should be a part of, of a formula. A third thing you might do, and I don't know if any state's doing it yet, but a lot of the best researchers tell us it's a good idea and that we ought to do it. And that is to listen to the students. Get student feedback about their teachers. They do that in college a lot. But let me tell you something the students can tell you about their teachers. One, how good were they in controlling the classroom? And second, how good were they in challenging them, the students, 
with rigorous work. Students know that. And not only can that be a, a third part of evaluating the teachers, but it also can give them some good feedback that they need in order to become better. Because as some people have said here today, this is not just about measuring the teachers and of course we want to have some consequences for it. It's about helping them get better. And all of us need to help those wonderful teachers working so hard in America's toughest job get better for our students' sake and the state and the future of our states. Now, the, uh, the results of evaluation, in my opinion, should be a factor in pay. There should be some pay for performance. Uh, it, we can do the kinds of things in terms of evaluating individual teachers. That's, I think, a good idea. We have some data now that we didn't used to have that means we can measure them individually. Let me give you a, a couple of other ways we can reward teachers for excellence. One of those is to have what we in North Carolina call an approach of using quality circles. Look at that whole school and say, okay, if each school in Iowa makes a year's progress, we're going to give the teachers a bonus. By the way, the paraprofessionals could have some of that too. If they make more than a year's progress, or if all the students, including those lowest performing, have gone up substantially, we'll give an additional bonus. That's called focusing on the whole school, a quality circle in manufacturing terms. We did it in North Carolina, and we found that 90 to 95% of our schools made that bonus when they all work together to have great results. And then another idea about how to pay for more effective teaching is to uh, be involved in supporting national board certification. I mentioned Sarah Wesling, and I know you all know her and are very proud of her. There are an awful lot of great nationally board certified teachers. Governor Branstead and I served on the national board when we were beginning that. Governor, you and I served on it when we had very few. There are now about 90,000 nationally board certified teachers in America, and I'm proud to say we've got about 18,000 of them in North Carolina. And we pay them a 12% bonus on top of their regular salary. And I want to tell you it's done amazing things in our state. Senator Harkin has been a great supporter at the national level in terms of some appropriations for that work. Uh, and you've got about 700 here. Cedar Rapids pays them a $500 a year bonus. Um, I would urge Iowa to use national board certification more strongly. The national academies at the national level in Washington have done a very fine study and proved the effectiveness the fact that they are better teachers, and, and thus we should reward them. The next critical element of reform, as I see it, has also been discussed here today, and that is school leadership. And somebody said it, we haven't paid enough attention to that. All of you have been excited, aroused by the talk about teaching, as you should be. What about the principles? That has really been ignored across America. Very few states have good programs for developing excellent principles, and we should develop them. If you want to know how important this is, ask teachers. Just ask anybody, any teacher. If you had to choose between being paid more and having a great principle, what would you choose? Every one of them will tell you a good principle, a really good principle. I've done that. I've brought in groups of teachers from all over America, and they have said that very clearly. So <clears throat> I think that's a special challenge to Iowa. Figure out how you can have great programs to develop principles. They are not cheap, but there's some very good ones out there <clears throat> that you can put in place, and I would urge you 
to do it. Now, good principles, of course, in my opinion, we ask them to do a lot, but they really ought to focus like a laser beam on student achievement. They ought to be masters of the data. They ought to work with their teachers and see that they are all focusing on the data. When we say data, we're talking about student achievement. Did they learn? What did they learn? Why didn't they learn more? The principals have got to fo be focusing on that all the time. And by the, by the way, the superintendents ought to be working with the principals in the same way. And they ought to bring them in regularly for what some people call data chats, talking about what the data is showing. My final point is that we have to get families, the community and all leadership, all of the leadership, including all the political leadership involved in helping students learn and schools succeed. In my state, the, re the PTA has been revitalized. I don't know how good they are in Iowa now. They used to be great. Then we had a time in North Carolina when they weren't very good. Now they're going into the school, into the homes of some of the children who are having the greatest problem. In, in many cases, they're taking 90 books that the publishers have provided free and going into their homes, talking with their parents, and leaving a library for those students. And some of those homes didn't have any books. Support your PTA. Help make it work more effectively. We need to uh, do more with volunteers and mentors. I saw some of the brochures out here. My wife Carolyn here from Jasper County worked. She's a school teacher, elementary. She worked for 35 years as a school volunteer every week. As governor for 16 years, I worked as a school volunteer every week. My secretary, my secretary knew that the first thing she was to put on my calendar was my school volunteer time. And we need to get a lot more people to do it. I hope you, I don't know if you have communities and schools in Iowa. It's a great organization. Business people support it strongly. And I would encourage you to talk to them. Of course, we need to have our companies involved. Governor Branstead and your lieutenant governor have been working closely with them. You need to have the churches, the faith community involved. I remember one time I was having a, I used to have town meetings in school libraries. I'd be there as governor, and we'd have the principal and the teachers and some parents, and you know, the superintendent would come. And one time they came up and whispered in my ear, Governor Branstead, you know how that works. They came up and whispered in my ear, Governor, there are seven ministers out here in this group. I think they thought I would be alarmed by it. I was thrilled by it. Let me tell you, the ministers can, can talk to the pe people in their church or their synagogue, whatever their place of worship is, and encourage them to help their children and to make them all that they can be and that God wants them to be. They can be a great part of it, and you ought to have them involved. We do need to have everybody involved. 1,600, 1,650 people here today in this great hall. Folks, you can do great things. When I left the governor's office, I wrote a little book. You can't see it, but the title of it is first in America. And I challenge my state of North Carolina in the next 10 years to become first in America. And in this book, toward the end, I quoted a man who was the first U.S. Secretary of Education. It was then called Edu uh, uh, Education and Health and Human Services. His name was John Gardner. He was a great leader, founded Common Cause, 
then was president of the Carnegie Corporation. But he said this about big work. He said, it's a public show with lots of people in the act. That's the way big things get done in our country. When the nation gets excited about something, great energies get released, and not from some central point. They bubble up like geysers from geothermal sources all over the place, all over the state. All kinds of people and institutions get involved, governors, legislators, business and labor leaders, universities, educators, the professions, the media. And then he said, the earth moves. I see you here today getting involved, and I can feel the earth moving in Iowa. I predict you will have great success if you work your heads off, and if you get all of Iowa involved, I wish you good luck, Godspeed, as you make the schools of Iowa all that they can be, all that they should be, all that they must be. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a couple minutes for questions? Yeah. Um, uh, Governor, first of all, thank you for coming here. Your leadership in North Carolina and around the country in education and so many policy areas has just been inspirational to so many people. So just a sincere thank you for coming here. Um, I'd like to, in many ways, uh, Iowa is called a, a purple state. Right, we're sometimes red and we're sometimes blue. And to really pull off any kind of meaningful change, we need to build a bipartisan coalition. And I know that this is the case in your state, North Carolina, too. What advice would you give to Iowa on how we construct uh, a, a coalition that is irrespective of, of party or ideology that's geared toward improvement? But if you're going to do it and you, and you want to do it, you're here today about doing it. You've got to do it on a bipartisan basis. Now, thank you. I, I noticed something when I was serving as governor. I noticed that sometimes the Republicans were more willing to put in, you know, some of the accountability that I thought we needed. And my fellow Democrats were more willing to put in the money we need both, and we need together to figure out what to do. See, what you're doing here today, folks, is you're figuring out what to do. You've seen these statistics, all the charts and the figures and everything, but up here, and you don't like what you're seeing, but you know you can be the best. And with that feeling and that knowledge and that caring and that drive, you need to get everybody working together. Governor Branstead is leading this in a wonderful way. You've got wonderful legislators here, leaders from all over this state, from all of the 99 counties. And you need to put your children first, and you need to put your jobs first. That's what education is about. And I would urge all of you, I believe you can do that better in Iowa than any state I know of. I really believe that. And I think the challenge for you all now to leave here today, the educators, of course, know so much, and they're the ones who are doing it. But all of the political leaders now have got to make this your top priority, to make these reform changes and then put the resources into it. And by the way, as this economy comes back, let the new money that comes in go to education. That's where it's most needed, and we're learning how to use it more effectively. Okay? Please uh, uh, give 
a warm show of appreciation for Governor Jim Hunt coming here today. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television.